Hey guys, and welcome to this channel. I spent many hours trying all kinds of different tweaks for my Pimax 8KX to try to find the quickest and most painless way to get up and flying in Star Wars Squadron. I started the game and it ran absolutely poorly and I had double vision going on, all kinds of little problems, and I'm going to show you with three quick settings how you can get up and flying as quick as possible if that's all you want to do. I'll show you that first, then I will show you how to maximize your resolution to try to get a balance between visual fidelity and the frame rate. I will also go over some more technical tweaks that you can do to your Steam VR configuration file to try to get even more performance as well as if you are trying to get the game to just run as smooth as possible and not use reprojection or any synthetic frame insertion or anything like that then I will show you how to maximize that frame rate as well. If you are looking to just get the game playable in PC VR as soon as possible then just change these settings real quick and you should be in a much better place than you were before if you were getting results uh, like I was initially. So we want to go into games under PyTool using the normal field of view render quality 1. We want to make sure compatible with parallel projections is selected to fix the double vision and hidden area mask is also selected. Then you are going to select apply and save go back to the status screen and start steam vr once steam vr is running you're going to go into settings select auto for render resolution under general close that and start star wars squadrons now that we have those settings set we are in the game and we have a playable frame rate. We've also fixed that double vision problem by enabling the parallel projections. If this works well for you, have fun playing the game. Um, if you want to try to tweak this a little bit more or go into a little bit more technicality in the settings, then stick around and I will show you how I was able to tweak it to my personal taste and play style. If you are still here because that didn't work for you or you want to learn how to tweak the settings a little bit, then we will go into that now. I'm going to pull up the settings for FPS VR. To explain this graph a little bit up here, in red, the numbers mean that we are not hitting uh, the native refresh rate of the headset. On these graphs, anything that is green means that um, you are hitting at least the native refresh rate of your headset. If it's an orange, then that means you're somewhere in between your native refresh rate and half of whatever that refresh rate is. So in this case, 37.5 is half of 75, which is the refresh rate of the Pimax AKX. Also, another thing is if you see these red spikes then that means that the frame being delivered at that moment is under half of whatever the refresh rate of your screen is. So right now we're running at 2676 by 2304 for our resolution and we are in between the halfway point of our native refresh and the native refresh number. We can actually tweak this a little bit more if we want a little more visual fidelity. If you want to just go for maximum smoothness and get your native refresh rate, then I will also show you how to do that as well. One issue that we're having right now though is that we're in auto mode and SteamVR thinks that our resolution setting should be around 34%. I happen to know that my system should be around 42%. And the reason for this is a Steam VR configuration file has logged some degraded uh, performance. And once we clear that out, 
change some settings, then we will be able to get uh, a little bit more visual fidelity with our resolution. Before we do that, I'm going to show you the software that you need to make sure you have installed. You want to make sure all your drivers are up to date because if one of those is old, then you are potentially suffering from poor performance that was fixed in a software update. So I'll show you what software you need to make sure you have, and then we will go into modifying the SteamVR configuration file. Before you update any software, as is conventional wisdom, make sure that any files you have on whatever computer or electronic you're updating, that any files you have on that are backed up because there is a small possibility that doing updates could corrupt your files. So make sure you back that up. That being said, the first thing we're going to check is that Windows is up to date. So you can click on your search button down in the taskbar or alternatively you can use the Windows S shortcut. Type update, click check for updates. And then you're gonna click this check for updates button. It will check Windows. Uh, I already updated it, so I'm not gonna have any, but if you have any, make sure that you install those and restart your system. Next thing we're gonna check are the NVIDIA drivers that we have. If you have a NVIDIA graphics card in your PC, if you have an AMD, then you will check the AMD drivers. We are gonna to go to this website, this URL up here. And when you load it, you are going to select from product series your graphics card series. Mine is a 1080 Ti, so I'm gonna click GeForce 10 series. It auto-populated the product as a 1080 Ti, which is correct for me. I have a 64-bit Windows 10 operating system. I want English and I want to see all of the downloads available. So then you will click search. You'll scroll down and this top driver here is a stable release that is the latest one you will want to note this driver version this is driver 456.55 we want to check and make sure that we have that driver installed the way you do that is right click on your desktop select nvidia control panel if you have a nvidia card once this loads click on system information in the bottom left corner and note the driver version that is being displayed for you. My driver is 456.55, and that is the latest driver, so I'm good to go on my driver. If your driver is older than whatever the latest release is, then make sure you update it because there could be optimizations that will make things run smoother for you. Once we are finished with that, we are going to make sure that our Pi tool is up to date. We're going to go to this URL. This URL is the forum for the Pimax headsets. Once you are here, scroll down, click on Pi tool, click on Pi tool and firmware links, and we're going to look for the latest Pi tool available that does not have a B at the end of the number. The B means that it's a beta Pi tool and we want the latest stable release. So we are going to look for the latest number that is 262. Open your Pi tool. Go to settings. And under current version, we have 262 here. The latest stable release is 262 for PyTool, so we are good to go with that. The next thing we're going to do is make sure that our headset is up to date and there is no firmware updates available for it. That will be under headset firmware. Click check version. It will ping Pimax to see if they have a new firmware for your headset. If they do, then go ahead and install that. The next thing we're going to do 
is go back into our NVIDIA control panel and we are going to check our power management settings. So we're going to go to manage 3D settings. I recommend just going to the global settings. Scroll down for power management mode. We want to make sure that this is prefer maximum performance. Once that's done, you have to apply it down here in the bottom right, and that is done. I recommend this software called FPS VR. It is available in Steam. It does cost $3.99, but it is extremely useful when you are troubleshooting VR, trying to maximize your performance. Make sure that if you are using a Steam VR headset that you have Steam installed, so store.steampowered.com is the Steam website, and you want to make sure you click install and install Steam if you have not done so. You want to make sure that you have Steam VR installed. If you don't have it installed, then install it. If it says launch, then you're good to go. You already have that installed, and that's what this little VR button is to launch Steam VR, which runs in the background and powers all your VR. The specs for my PC are a Windows 10 64-bit PC with a Intel 4770K CPU. I am running a NVIDIA 1080 Ti graphics card, 16 gigabytes of DDR3 RAM. I'm using an SSD. The headset is a Pimax 8KX. My PyTools software is 262. NVIDIA driver is 465.55. Once we have everything closed, we're going to navigate to the SteamVR configuration file. Go to your local disk C drive, if that's where you installed Steam. Steam is going to be wherever you installed it. If you use the default settings, it's going to be in Program Files x86, possibly Program Files, or wherever you saved it, if you saved it into a custom folder. I installed Steam directly onto my C drive, so I will enter Steam go into the config folder and this steamvr.vr settings is the configuration file that we are going to modify. First thing you want to do is copy this and paste it onto your desktop in case we need that for some reason just as a backup. These settings here are what we want to copy over onto our SteamVR config, and I will show you what that looks like once they are copied. I have copied these values over into my SteamVR configuration file. So once I have those set, I will save, and then we will restart PyTool and SteamVR. Now that SteamVR is running, we will go to Settings in FPS VR Basic, and we can see that the auto configuration now for render resolution for SteamVR is now recommending 42% and a resolution output of 2972 by 2560, which is higher than we had before. So once we restart, squadrons, we should see that increased resolution inside the game as well. Now that we have the SteamVR configuration file modified and we have reloaded the game, we can see that our frame rate is now lower than it was. We were around 60 before. Now our resolution should be a little bit higher because we modified that SteamVR configuration file. Click on Settings, FPS VR, go to Basic, we can see now the recommended resolution percentage is 42%, and now it's running a resolution of 2972 by 2560, which is better than we had initially by just setting it to automatic. So this is pushing a little bit more resolution to the headset, increasing the visual clarity, and it's still pretty smooth. So here we've been able to increase our resolution a little bit from what we had before and just keep this in mind you may have to uh, reconfigure that steam vr configuration file from time to time if you notice degradation in your available resolution so this is 
maximizing our frame rate and visual fidelity, but they play off of each other, so we're having to make a compromise there. But if you want the smoothest frame rate possible, then we need to lower the resolution so that we can maintain at least the native headset refresh rate so you have the smoothest experience possible. I have closed the game and restarted Steam VR. Now to maximize frame rate on your headset, you're going to go into the Steam VR settings. We are going to switch from the auto render resolution to custom. And then we are going to move this slider down to 20%. So we are going to lower the resolution a lot in order to maximize our frame rate. Exit that and then restart the game. We are back in the game after setting our resolution to 20%. And we are maintaining our headset frame rate now at 75 frames per second. When your graph is green, all the frames being produced um, are fast enough that they are hitting your native screen rate in your headset. Um, and I much prefer this, especially for a space sim that uh, has a lot of movement happening. So if we go to our settings for FPS VR, go to basic. We can see that that 20% resolution was applied. And right now the resolution is 2052 by 1764. So this is substantially less than what we were at before. And unfortunately, that's just the trade-off you have to make if you want to have maximum smoothness with no artificial frames inserted. You're going to have to drop that resolution or increase your hardware power. If you wanted to try to get a little bit more resolution out of your system uh, and still stay within your refresh rate of your HMD, then you could tweak this a little bit further by opening your settings for SteamVR. I go up 2% at a time and see how it runs. I'm going to leave mine at 20%, but you can tweak this. Try to fine tune it a little bit more if that's what you would like to do. Uh, just make sure that you shut down the video game and restart it in order to make sure that those settings are applied. My specs as well as links to all the software needed for this will be in the comment description below, including the text that needs to be copied into the SteamVR config file if you desire to modify that. I worked many hours on this video trying to find the optimal tweaks, and I hope it was helpful to you. If it was, please consider sharing this video to anyone else who's struggling with this game, or Pimax in general. And please consider liking the video and subscribing to this channel for more videos like this one in VR.